Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Day and I'm Chief of Breast Imaging and today I'm going to speak to you about screening breast imaging. I have no financial disclosures. The objectives of this talk are that the participant will learn about factors affecting screening mammography utilization, the participant will learn about updated screening mammography recommendations for average risk women, and the participant will learn about screening mammography recommendations for high risk women. Breast cancer is a significant health risk worldwide with more than 2 million cases which occur annually. Breast cancer will develop in one in eight women in their lifetime, and breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States for women. The public health policy which has had the greatest impact upon breast cancer mortality has been the advent of widespread screening mammography. The goal of screening mammography is early detection of stage one node negative cancer. After the widespread utilization of screening mammography in the mid-1980s, there was a resultant decrease in mortality of approximately 40%. There are multiple factors which affect screening mammography utilization, and they include public health policy, which directly affects screening guidelines, access to screening mammography, as well as primary care physician and provider access and referral. With respect to public health policy, the USPSTF, which is the United States Preventive Services Task Force, in 2009 made a change to screening mammography recommendations. Prior to 2009, the recommendations were every one to two years beginning at the age of 40 with no end age limit. After 2009, the recommendations became screening mammography should occur in patients aged 50 through 74 every two years for screening schedule. The recommendation for patients aged 40 to 49 were that the decision to start a regular biennial screening mammography before the age of 50 should be an individual one and take into context patients' tolerance for benefits and harms and is a conversation to be had with a primary care physician or provider. This was given a grade of C. With respect to women aged greater than 74, the recommendation was an I, meaning that there was no there was insufficient evidence before or against screening mammography in patients aged 74 or older. Medicare utilization post USPSTF guidelines decreased to approximately 309 mammograms per thousand women from a peak of 322 mammograms per, women, per thousand women in 2009. Additionally, post USPSTF, as physicians are not a monolith, multiple societies came out with their own breast imaging recommendations which made recommending screening mammography for primary care physicians and providers even more confusing and even more confusing was this information to the lay patient. This chart demonstrates breast cancer deaths avoided using randomized control trials and cisnet modeling. The top row demonstrates the fact that the breast cancer deaths that are avoided by screening mammography are much less than that is what's modeled with annual screening and biennial screening mammography as modeled by 2000 net cisnet um, data. Additionally, or the most deaths avoided by breast cancer is by an annual screening schedule and not by a biennial screening schedule for all age cohorts. This slide demonstrates the benefits of the three recommended strategies. Um, in 2016, the American Cancer Society deviated from the American College of Radiology and the Society of Breast Imaging Guidelines and changed their annual screening mammography to begin at between the ages of 45 and 54 and biennially after the ages of 55 to 79. So as you can see clearly, with a reduced number of screening, you will see that there's a reduced number of mammograms per thousand women as one would expect with every other year screening. But the mortality, the percentage mortality reduction has the most, is most beneficial beginning with annual screening mammography at the age of 40 with a mortality reduction of approximately 40% as opposed to 23.2% in the USPSTF recommendation. Additionally, the life years gained per thousand women screened is 189 in the annually screened group as opposed to 110 um, life years gained in the group that's, scanned, that's imaged every other year from the ages of 50 to 74. And let's talk about the performance of screening mammography in patients that are older than the age of 74. As the patient age increases, the mammography, the sensitivity of mammography does increase to about 95% in patients age 90 or greater. But in that population of patients between 
between 70 and 79. The cancer detection rate is 6.2 cancers per thousand women with a CDR of 80.4 percent and a positive predictive value of 37.6 percent. This just means that annual screening mammography in patients aged greater than 74 is actually behaves very well and we find a high number of cancers in this patient population which are typically small and are amenable to treatment. This graph demonstrates the years of life lost due to breast to, to death from breast cancer by age of diagnosis. So you can see that the most years of life lost due to death are between 45 and 54. The USPSTF guidelines would exclude this cohort of women from the benefits of screening mammography as well as this cohort of women aged 40 to 44 from the benefits of screening mammography. Access to screening mammography also is primarily a function of health care costs. So the Breast and Cervical Cancer Program is a nationwide program which enrolls patients who are un uninsured and underinsured and affords them the opportunity of screening mammography. If subsequent diagnostic mammography and ultrasounds need to be performed, this program also covers the cost of those procedures and the patient is enrolled in Medicare. The Affordable Care Act has a cost sharing provision such that they cover the full cost of a screening mammogram. So the USPSTF recommendations of C and I in patients that are aged 40 to 49 and older than the age of 74 puts at risk health care coverage as typically health insurance um, companies will cover screening recommendations that are graded A or B and may deny screening recommendations that have a C or an I. And additionally, approximately a third of patients in 20, a third of Medicare eligible women in 2017 and 2018 did not undergo screening mammography. And some of the question is as to why, especially since there's a known, a known mortality benefit. So primary care access has a great impact on access and invitation to screening mammography. So primary care physicians and providers are one of the best predictors to obtaining screening mammography. And primary care access, especially underserved communities, since they typically access the healthcare system during emergencies, there's no screening recommendations at point of care, so therefore we miss an opportunity to engage these women in um, self-care behaviors. This chart demonstrates um, a graph of, on the vertical axis, the percentage of patients who engage with screening mammography, and the red line demonstrates that high primary care physician and provider engagement correlates positively with more screening mammography utilization as opposed to patients who have low primary care physician or provider um, engagement. So before USPSTF 2009, the American College of Radiology, ACOG, the American Academy of Family Physicians, and the American College of Physicians all recommended beginning screening at the age of 40 with screening intervals of one to two years. Post USPSTF after 2009, the American Academy of Family Physicians and the American College of Physicians changed their screening recommendations to mirror those of the USPSTF beginning at the age of 50 and ending at the age of 74. So this is just a chart that demonstrates the number of women, uh, the visits in which screening mammography had been recommended and it peaked in 2008 with variability and an overall decreasing trend um, since 2008. This chart is a chart that demonstrates US number of mammography referrals per 1,000 visits pre and post USPSTF, and they subdivided into subspecialty category as well as patient age cohort. Prior to USPSTF, there were a large numbers of mammograms being recommended per 1,000 women, and post USPSTF, you can see that there is a decline. The specialties which demonstrated the most marked decline in recommendations were general family practice as well as internal medicine. So for example, 308 mammograms per 1,000 women decreased to 20, 249, a decrease of 18.9%. Um, the OB obstetrics and gynecology practitioners also did demonstrate a decrease, however, it was much less marked. And the overall age cohort, which demonstrated a marked decrease in recommendation was those patients greater than the age of 75 with a reduction of approximately 51.1%. 50 
So overall, screening mammography referral rates decreased by 25 to 30 percent overall post-USPSTF recommendations in 2009. The most significant decrease in referral rates was amongst the internal medicine and family medicine physicians and providers, which are consistent with their society guidelines. And the biggest decline in referrals occurred in the population aged greater than 75. So because screening mammography has been known to have a mortality impact, any decrease in screening mammography can adversely affect mortality. And so even though white women and African American women are diagnosed with breast cancer at similar incidences, breast cancer has a disproportionate effect on African American women. Since 1990, breast cancer death rates have decreased by 26% 20 in African American women as opposed to 40% in non-Hispanic white women. And overall, the mortality rate from breast cancer is 41% greater in African American women than non-Hispanic white women. And the question is to why? Well, we've addressed that earlier with respect to screening policy and guidelines, as well as access. Additionally, tumor biology, as well as social determinants of health are also primary considerations. But invitation to and participation in screening mammography is a metric that we as healthcare providers can make an impact on. So just a few notes, 23% of breast cancer diagnoses, diagnoses in African American women occur younger than the age of 50, as opposed to 16% in white women. The triple negative subtype represents 21% of invasive cancer in African American women and presents at a younger age. The perceived risk of breast cancer in, is lower in the African American community. So therefore, there is a decreased motivation to actually participate in screening mammography. And there's studies that have demonstrated on minority populations that found that working with a primary care physician and a provider to encourage screening was an effective modality in order to increase these rates of utilization. So what is the correct screening guidelines? So the American Call of Radiology has stated that all women, especially African-American women and those of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, should be evaluated for breast cancer risk no later than the age of 30. And so for those patients who do, are not at increased risk, patients shall begin screening mammography at the age of 40, no later than 45. And they shall continue as long as the woman is in good health chooses to be screened, and tends to seek and tolerate treatment, and or the life expectancy is greater to or equal than 10 years. The following societies also agree with the, the aforementioned guidelines. So with respect to risk stratification, once we risk stratify, there's an opportunity for supplemental breast imaging in those patients who are deemed high risk. The imaging modalities of choice are breast MRI and breast ultrasound. Breast MRI increased increases cancer detection rate in high-risk patients on the order and the sensitivity of MRI in high-risk patients is greater than 98 percent with the sensitivity of mammography on the order of 37.5 percent. African-American women are also less likely to adhere to breast MRI because number one they're not aware of their risk and number two there's lack of physician referral. Breast ultrasound is also an imaging modality which does in incrementally detect more cancers in addition to mammography. However, the increased false positive rate and the lower positive predictive value decreases widespread utilization of this practice in high-risk women. So overall, with respect to mammography and MRI, if you have a genetics-based risk increase, so these are, these are the um, imaging protocols for patients who have a genetic-based increased risk and they're untested first-degree relatives. Initial mammography begins at the age of 30, and they initiate screening the MRI between age 25 and 30 years. For BRCA1 carriers, we initiate MRI at the age of 25 and screening mammography by the age of 30. And for BRCA2 carriers, we initiate screening MRI beginning between the ages of 25 and 30, and we initiate screening mammography by the age of 30. Screening breast imaging with respect to patients who have Hodgkin's lymphoma and they've had mantle chest radiation before the age of 30 and a dose of greater than 10 gray. Annual screening mammography is recommended between the ages of 20, um, 25 or eight years after the completion of radiation therapy and annual MRI beginning between the ages of 25 to 30 is the recommendation. There are updated guidelines in 2018 with respect to annual breast MRI for patients who would benefit, and, a and patients who have had a breast cancer diagnoses before the age of 50 would benefit from MRI, and patients who have breast cancers diagnosed at any age with dense breast tissue would also benefit with supplemental 
um, breast MRI screening. So in summary, annual mammography beginning at the age of 40 achieves the greatest mortality reduction for women of average risk. Risk assessment by the age of at least 30 would identify those patients who may benefit from supplemental breast imaging. African American women are more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of 50 and have a greater proportion of aggressive tumor subtypes. Therefore, screening recommendations beginning at the age of 50 would have a significant deleterious impact on disease-specific mortality in this patient population. Primary care physicians and providers exert the most influence as it relates to adherence to screening mammography. Breast MRI is extremely sensitive for the detection of invasive ductal cancer in high-risk populations. Breast ultrasound should be performed in women with elevated risk who would qualify but are unable to undergo breast MRI.